Good morning, friends. Well, I do hope that you've all stayed safe since we chatted last Sunday. Today, we start our Advent journey, secure in the knowledge that our God is a God of love. Advent is a time of celebration and anticipation of Christ's birth. But it is more than that. It is only in the shadow of Advent that the miracle of Christmas can be fully understood and appreciated. It is only in the light of Christmas that the Christian life makes any sense. It is between the fulfilled promise of Christ's first coming and the yet to be fulfilled promise of his second coming that Karl Barth wrote these words. He said, unfulfilled and fulfilled promises are related to each other, just as the dawn is to sunrise. Both are in fact the same promise. Wonderful words, aren't they? The promise is, Jesus Christ has come and he will come again. And this is the essence of Advent. Just think of those words as we close our eyes and come to the Lord in prayer. O oh, Heavenly Father, we begin this week of Advent with a heart awakening to faith. You are our signpost, lighting our way forward. Darkness may abound, but your revealed light shows us the way. The night may linger, but hope comes in the morning because of you. May we turn our hearts towards you. We pray this all in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. I have one short Bible reading this morning as we talk about faith, and that comes from Hebrews 11, verses 1 to 3. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commanded for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. As I said earlier, our message this morning is all about faith. Now you might recall that last week our message was Christ the King. And you remember what we said, that we should allow Jesus into our lives. But to do this, we need to break open our lives to let him in. I think this can best be illustrated by taking a look at the painting of Holman Hunt, of Jesus standing outside that huge oak door, knocking to enter. The painting shows us that the door is overgrown with weeds. And when I see this, I often think about our own lives that have become overgrown by the weeds of sin. The painting also shows that there's no handle on the outside. And when I see this, I, I, I think that we surround ourselves so often with worldly, go worldly gods and there's no place for our Father to enter into our lives. Yes, God's sovereignty and love for God starts with faith. Today, as we said earlier, is the first Sunday of Advent and the first day of our church new year. How do the Advent principles of hope, peace, joy and love all link into faith? Or perhaps we should ask how faith connects them all. I'm going to dwell on the aspects, I'm not going to dwell on the aspects of hope and peace and joy and love, as over the next few weeks, you will hear more about these four topics. But I would like to take some time 
to consider how developing our faith this time of Advent will allow us to experience the full, the full Advent experience. Let's start off with hope. Some people think that faith and hope are the same thing, or that hope in some way describes what faith is all about. But in the Bible we read faith and hope. So biblical writers seem to think of them as two separate entities. We hope for something that we may or may not get. Some people hope to win the lotto. We hope that our car will start on a cold morning. There is no confidence that what we hope for will actually happen, will actually materialize. When we have faith in something or someone, however, we experience that we expect that something to happen. We expect those people to deliver or that person to deliver. Faith then elevates hope from something wishy-washy to something more certain. A reality, if you will. Now, we can have faith in a great number of things. I have faith that tomorrow the sun will rise in the east, even if it's cloudy. As Christians, we do not need to hope that we will one day meet Jesus face to face. We can be sure and certain of that fact. We can put our faith in him, in his promises and in his word. This leads me to wonder if other people, friends, family, work colleagues, clients, even strangers have faith that I will deliver what I promise. See, faith is a two-way street. Can Jesus have faith in me to do what he requires me to do? To use my gifts, my time, my talents to bring people closer to him? Or does he merely hope that one day I will get around to doing that? Let's move on now and let's explore the link between faith and peace. I believe that this presupposes that we are ready that we already grasp the link between faith and hope. When we know when we know that we are secure in our relationship with Jesus, we are able to enjoy the peace that comes from knowing that Jesus is forever in our corner. He's always with us. When trouble strikes, and believe you me, he does, we have faith that Jesus is there beside us, helping us to navigate the troubled waters. When we are unsure about a decision, we know that our prayers are heard and that we can depend on divine guidance. You see, our faith provides us with a peace that the Apostle Paul described as a peace that surpasses all understanding. A peace that surpasses all understanding. Others may find our peace unsettling or illogical and that it's simply because we do not understand our faith and what it provides and feeds us with that and nourishes our inner peace. Again, I pause to consider my own life. I think about, does my life reflect divine peace? Do others look at me and think, I wish I had that sense of peace that Selwyn has? Or how can I experience such peace in the midst of my my storm that's, that's overpowering my life. Do people look at you and want to know where you got that peace from and how that 
your faith brings that peace into your life. This now brings me to joy. I don't think any of us need an introduction to joy. Think of that bubbly, warm feeling in your tummy when you see the one you love walk into a room. Or that delight on a child's face when they see a Christmas tree with all the gifts and the lights. Or the jubilation when a doctor declares a cancer patient is in remission. Oh, I can go on and on, but we all get the picture. But how is this linked to faith? See, when we have faith in a divine Father who loves us, we get to experience divine joy. When we enter the presence of Jesus, when we get that feeling of Jesus by our side, that is the divine joy I'm talking about today. Those goosebumps I experienced last Sunday in church when we, when we sang, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, led by our very own choir. That was a perfect example of the time, type of joy I'm referring to. Joy derived from faith in God is like an an added dimension to the joy we already know and experience outside of God. By being faithful to what, by being faithful to what Jesus is called us to do, is to experience that deep joy that we can expect. Have you ever experienced the sense of deep pleasure and satisfaction after you do something for someone else? with no expectation of reward? Have you ever felt Christ prompting you to do something and that wonderful, amazing feeling that you get afterwards? That is the divine joy that I'm talking about that stems from faith that Jesus can and does use to expand his kingdom. By blessing others in Jesus' name, we are more richly blessed than the recipient. You see, giving is much better than receiving. I don't know about you, but the more I experience that joy, the more of it I want. I crave it. I want to feel Jesus smiling down and saying, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. There can be no greater joy than that. My last thought is the link between faith and love. I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time on this one, but I have three words for you. Yes, God is love. Without faith, we can never know that for sure. God's love cannot penetrate our lives without faith. Without faith, we cannot have the confidence to bring joy and love into the lives of others who do not have that divine love for themselves. God is love. Do you hope that it is true? Or do you have the faith to know that it is real? You see, God's love brings peace. Do you have faith that you can find solace, peace and comfort in God's loving arms? Or do you hope to find it elsewhere in some worldly pleasure? Do you have faith that you can find joy in God's love, even though you may not feel it right at this moment. True faith is knowing where to find the source of Christmas and how to assess the benefits faith in a loving, joyful, peaceful God provides. So, in closing, 
I read the Hebrews 11 verse 1 again, which defines faith as faith being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain for what we do not see. Friends, today we've only just scraped the surface of faith. Faith in Jesus brings unspeakable joy. My prayer today is that you will accept God's grace of gift, that you will accept God's gift of grace and become a child of God. Friends, I find this story of faith very moving. And I pray that you, during these little times of coming into the presence of God, that you have found his peace, his love in your hearts as well. This story is very significant in your faith journey. Take time just to ponder those four elements, but most importantly, to ponder your faith in God. Let us close our eyes as we thank the Lord for all that he has given us. Dear Father, in a season when every heart should be happy, many are struggling with the heaviness of life, burdens that steal our joy. In a world where worry, not peace and joy prevail, stir up the good news of the gospel within us again. We know that peace on earth can only come when hearts find peace with you. For you are the peace that knows no bounds. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Father, as we start this journey of Advent, we pray that you will fill our hearts and our minds with hope, peace, joy, and love for you and for all mankind. Amen. As we share the grace, let us join our spiritual hands and say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for taking this time and sharing the last three Sundays with me. All that remains now is for me to wish you all a, a happy Christmas and pray that you go in peace, go in love, and go in the knowledge that Jesus Christ loves you. Amen.